saying that if a person is waiting for Elul the whole year to do tshuva, they won't do tshuva in Elul. If you do tshuva, you do tshuva every day. You don't wait 11 months to do tshuva, you know, when the deadline is coming closer. You would think that many will have the wit to do the right tshuva at the right time. Unfortunately, most people don't have it together. Okay? Don't get offended. But most people don't have it together in regards to their tshuva. I'm not talking about the, the, the mess in their home. I'm talking about their tshuva. <laughs> Other things also, most people don't have it together. But uh, if we would have it together, then, then we wouldn't be in such an exile. But I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying that in regards to the tshuva, most people, they don't have it right. So, and it's not about pat patronizing. It's about observing and trying to educate, teach, and uh, change. But, uh, but I hear it all the time. It's Elul. It's Elul. Really? Last month was Av. You know? So, so it's Elul. Why, you, have to, you, only, you only shut your mouth from talking Lashon Hara on Elul? Ah, Elul, I have to stop by Lashon Hara. I mean, that's the stupidity of people. So what if it's Elul? Yeah, you're right. It's a very auspicious time, a very holy month. Many opportunities. Get your act together. But uh, don't go overboard with that. And uh, there, there are a group of people who are, Baruch Hashem, they're acting the right way. They're working towards their spiritual growth. They're working towards the connection with Hashem. They're working towards their tshuva, their olam haba. Okay, there are a lot of people like that with all their difficulties. The success is not measured if you, if you are uh, uh, rich or famous. The success is measured as how much effort you pay, put and you, your diligence and you're not breaking down. And, but going back to Elul, do you buy every day? So what if it's Elul? What if Don't you... Do we have extra assistance in Elul? I said that. We do have extra assistance. It's a special month. The 13 attributes of mercy are uh, shining in a revealed way a more accessible way. The king is in the field, meaning I can access Hashem for sure. Mm -hmm. But to hang my tshuva on Elul and then don't, don't, not to do nothing about it, I'm talking to those people. Mm -hmm. See, my problem is when I talk to people, the, <laughs> the, how would you say that? The colors, the shades of the listeners are, are not the same. We're talking here from other side corners of the world, Jews, non-Jews, religious, non-religious, people who admire me, people who despite me and hate me, but still listen to me because they're waiting to see where I'll fail. He said that! And then they, they should have some good material for their Roshon Hara. But uh, the polarity of my uh, viewers... It's not that I can talk directly to one person and it applies to everybody. So an uh, avid listener of mine needs to know that I'm not always talking to them. There are other situations. But we started with Elul. I wanted to address a few points. The first thing that I wanted to address, uh, not to address, just to, to educate, to tell, because a lot of people are asking me about the coming proofs. They see the advertisements. Many people thought my account was hacked and my identity was stolen and a, a clone of me is going to be on the cruise and, uh, and tell you that everything's okay. So uh, the cruise is real. It's, it, it's the <laughs> I'm not telling you the messages that I got about the cruise. I can, now I can't advertise nothing. Your account was hacked. Yesterday I wasn't really in the vineyard. It was my third clone that was go like... So, so I was invited to speak on this cruise. Uh, it's the 5th and 9th to November. It's leaving Haifa. It's going to stop in uh, Greece and uh, Turkey. Uh, needless to say, uh, kosher accommodations and all the rest of the, the things that come with the cruise. What I don't think, what I think that most people don't understand, and maybe it was advertised in such of a, a way, 
People think that the few hundred people, the few thousand people that's going to be on the ship, we're starting as some underground uh, group, and we're... Uh, so I'm not starting anything, by the way. I'm not starting anything, and I'm not doing anything. People, uh, I'm telling you based on the questions that I get. People uh, are asking me if they should come because they want to be in the, uh, in the underground, in the machteret. Really? <laughs> and I'm going to do a, a machteret with you. You're right. Yeah. With all the dangers that are hovering around me, I'm going to team up with a bunch of people that will slow me down and expose everything that I have. I like your plan. So, in case you haven't figured that out, I'm um, stealth. Um, so, we're not going to recruit members to our secret agency and to talk about conspiracies, because that's what people think. I'm sure we're going to talk about conspiracies because we talk about truth. Uh, but the reason why I uh, uh, agreed and wanted to come on the cruise is because of the, the topics, because of I want to meet many of my uh, students and, 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 and followers that I never met. I mean, I used to go on tours every two or three months, so I would constantly meet my students. Now, I, for four years, I didn't fly. So I want to meet my students. A student wants, wants to meet me. But first of all, so I want to, again, officially invite uh, anyone who is interested in, uh, and wants to come. The Gashmiut part there will be nice, will be a ship, will be islands, will be kosher meals, will be so many attractions. And I don't think it's uh, overpriced. It's a, it's a normal price, I'm not asking a lot. Uh, I do believe that there's still promotions that you can get some early birds. But the Gashmiut is going to be nice, okay? You're on a ship, you can't go wrong. The, the spirituality, that's a whole different thing. The whole different thing. See, I, uh, people didn't figure me out, by the way. People listened to me for 10 years, a fraction of people figured me out. It's okay, it's okay, take your time. But how did somebody tell me the other day? He told me in Hebrew, but he told me something along the line that you are a mystery. I still, be, I know you for 20 years. I still figure, still figure, didn't figure you out. I was like, good. You won't. But, oh, I figured myself out a long time ago. That was pretty clear. Uh, but, uh, th I'll be very blunt. I'm not friendly. I'm not a friendly guy. Okay? I have many things on my mind, many things on my plate, very, very busy life. And also, I'm not like a jolly, friendly guy that hangs out. And it's not me. Besides that, I'm very, very, uh, uh, what's the word? I don't have the word. But my time is very important to me. And it's not about Ivrit. If you don't mind, it's just recording and it's live and all these comments and the questions. Uh, uh, it's not about saying in Hebrew some words maybe don't exist. And my English vocabulary is not that great. But nevertheless, my time is very precious to me. If you start wasting my time, you're going to have a problem. If I give you five minutes of my time, you use that five minutes to the best and move on because there's another 500 people in line. But my time is very precious to me. I have a family, I have seven kids, I have a wife, I have businesses, I have teach uh, teachings, I have a lot of things. I don't like wasting my time. So, it's not that I'm coming and doing a lot of what I'm doing because I'm friendly. It's because I look at the big picture. Okay? I'm not going to come and bluntly say that a lot of people I don't like. So I'll choose to actually say that. And those are the people that I don't like. But I don't need to like them. I don't need to like them or love them. I need to see them as part of the system. 20 plus years ago, I told you I, was, I had moving companies, trucking companies. I was involved in many, many different illegal activities. 
that eventually God led me to sit in jail for a long time and many old problems. But why am I saying that? Because the trade that I worked in, most of the workers that worked for me were lowlifes. The ones that were directly under me, they were the more uh, professional staff. But the simple workers were people that we would pick up in the streets just to labor, just regular labor. We would go to half, high, half house, halfway houses to keep, pick up the guys that are sitting out bored all day long. Half of them are, are, are still in recovery. And, and this is, I mean, we would pick people up from the streets. Come, we need labor. So I didn't deal with, like, people that you can communicate so easily. They don't understand you so much. They don't understand value of, of your business or whatever. But I learned very quick that I need these labor people. I cannot uh, 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 look down at them and kick them away because then I'll have to do that. Okay? I'm saying it. It's, it doesn't sound so nice. It sounds a little bit arrogant. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to paint the picture that I got to a point that I was like, I don't need to like these workers. I don't need to like anything about them. I don't need to get along with them. I don't even need to know their name. But they're running my system. And without them, I'm nothing. So again, I know it sounds selfish, arrogant, disgusting, but it gave me the understanding, a deep understanding that hopefully, if you will get that deep understanding, 80% of the Lashon Hara in the world will stop, and we have better chances that Mashiach will come, is the fact that I don't need to like anyone. I can talk to a person, help them, help them and still dislike them, and their behavior, and many other things. One has nothing to do with the other. So the fact is, and I'm the one who has the guts to say publicly, I'm not friendly and I don't like people. I also tell it to some people in their face when they cross lines. But the reality is that everybody's like that. I'm not different than you. So you have a group of people that you like and respect and honor, and there's a lot of people you don't like. And you trash them. And you think bad about them. Don't, don't, I'm, I'm looking at you, I'm not talking about you, okay? So, hey, I know, I know, I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know, I'll start looking towards the window. <laughs> no, I just don't want you to get hurt. Uh, I know you are an amazing woman. I know you don't slander people. Uh, but the fact is that if I don't like somebody, not me, when, you, when we don't like somebody, I don't care trashing them. I don't care humiliating them, stepping all over them, d d uh, 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 whatever. So a long time ago, I got to the point, to, to the understanding, I, I don't need to like the players. I need to make the players work. That's it. So here you have it. I don't like many of the players. Okay, they're not team players. Some are completely not, not team players, they're out of, the, out of the system even. But, and what I'm saying right now, each and every one of you has it in your own private life. You don't have to wonder, what is he talking about? I'm talking about your private life, that we all share this common denominator. That we don't like a lot of people. And some people, with an exception, some people are very overly friendly and they like everybody and nobody can do any wrong and everybody's great and, and, and there are people like that too. But why am I saying that? Is because I see in my vision the big picture of their redemption. It can, cannot be done by yourself. The Lubavitch Rebbe said, uh, I don't know exactly when it was, but um, a, little bit re a little bit before he passed, he said, uh, I did everything I could, now it's all up to you. That's the statement he left. I did everything that I could. That's it. I, I, cannot, do, I cannot do your part. <laughs> so I did what I did, and adios. So... The reality is that most people don't do their part. And I'm talking in regards to the redemption. And then there are the ones who are ruining it. 
And then there's the fraction of people who are trying to do something to, to, to get things happening. So let me be straight out with you. Pshiach is not coming anytime soon, okay? I know for the last decades I kept telling you But in the last decade, I also didn't have the ability to see forward 10 years and see the stupidity and the foolish behavior of most people to determine it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Try what you say, try, say what you say. You can pretend, Mashiach is coming, we're so happy. First of all, let me tell you the biggest distortion. It has to be addressed. And if we're not going to change it, we're going to have a serious problem. And by the way, what I'm talking about now, I'm giving you a taste of what's going to happen on the cruise. I am not going to talk about things that are already known. People are sending me these stupid comments. Are you going to talk about that the CIA bombed the Twin Towers? <laughs> what? That's comments that I get, by the way. That's, that's uh, messages that I'm going to get, that, that I get. Are you going to invent another thing that aliens or what are, we, what are you going to, what's the next uh, cookinomaniac you're going to invent? So I don't invent anything. I deliver facts. You have an issue with a fact, go address it with the maker. Somebody met me a few months ago and he came and he wanted to see me. He came here to Tzvat. And, and then he told me, Somehow, I was listening to you for many years. I, don't like, I didn't like you. I didn't like you. I didn't, I didn't uh, respect you. I, I thought you were completely crazy. Uh, nothing you say makes sense. But somehow, I listened. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> but anyways, so he said, uh, up until Corona, I was convinced that you are a psycho, that you are a lunatic. Not psycho, that you are a lunatic. Like, completely... The drugs really evaporated all the cells in the brain that was left. But he says, but then Corona came and everything that you ever said was exactly how you said it. So now I'm your number one follower. Now I believe every word that you say. So it's not that I need applause and I definitely don't need, my, I don't have an ego. People think I'm arrogant. I don't have an ego. Hashem took care of that a long time ago. I come off maybe as arrogant, but that's my, how I talk. But I'm not. I'm not arrogant, and I'm not, I don't have an ego, and, and I, I, I live by my name. But, it's not that I'm trying to impress, oh, I knew it. It's not something about I knew it. It has nothing to do with I knew it. It has to do with, this is the information. You want it? Take it. You don't want it? Don't take it. I don't laugh at me. That's a problem. You don't have to like me. And you definitely don't have to agree with what I say. But why mock me? Why slander me online? You know, listen, listen, I'm not going to tell, <coughs> I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell the ones online. I have a net, uh, infrastructure, a net of online spies. Okay? I know, hear, see everything that goes about me, okay? Comments, talk back, talk to, how do you call them, talk talks, the chat box. I know everything. I don't go online. I don't go on, my, on any of the social media. I don't read comments, but I have a dedicated team that shows me everything. So I know who slanders me. I know who trashes me. I know what people say about, I know everything. And I'm saying that because people are trying one way or another in so many different ways to, to which, which that's what I'm saying. You don't like me. Step away and leave. Why are you trying to put me down? It's not going to work. You're not going to be able to do that. People, now even with that cruise, the screenshots that I'm getting from all these WhatsApp groups, he's a lunatic, I have to warn you all, he's this, he's that, okay. Some clown wrote something, I have to warn the public that Rabbi Nava claims the, the, all these conspiracies and this and he's going to brainwash you and... Uh, wow, you're really a genius. How did you figure that out? I mean, my videos are not to be found anywhere online. You figured out 
The lights say conspiracies and you have to warn the people. Well, 15 million people saw the conspiracies. They know it before you. Why do why, why you have to go and slander me in public? This idiot, this clown, just lost his Olam Abba. You know that? And I hope he's seeing it. Ten days before Rosh Hashanah, and publicly, he writes Lashon Ara all over the place about a famous rabbi that just wants to do good to the world. All his mitzvot now went to me. Remember this Gemara? We learned this Gemara. You know this Gemara? This is Gemara Meforeshet. The Talmud says, you talk Lashon Ara about me? In that moment, all your mitzvot go to me and all my sins go to you. I am a gazillionaire in mitzvot. You know that? <laughs> I'm, not talking, I'm not joking with you. I am one of the most Lashon Ara speaked about Jewish figures in the world. I'm not talking about now uh, Hollywood stars and uh, you know, politicians. That, the Lashon Ara, I don't know. But as a Jewish figure in the Jewish world, which is also active in the non-Jewish world, I am probably one of the most spoken Lashon Ara about. And I'm so happy about it. I love it. Because I believe 100% what our holy sages say, which means that I am a gazillionaire in mitzvot and I don't have any sins. In Hebrew, you know what they say? Stadarti. Stadarti. I'm, I'm uh, well organized. So talk to Shonara as much as you want. But what bothers me is not that you're slandering me. I am Israeli. I have very thick skin. You cannot offend me. I'm tough like a rock. Any word you'll say will fly by me. It doesn't even register. What bothers me is that the Lashonara hurts everybody. You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting everybody else. You don't agree with me. Shut up. I don't agree with many people. I will say my opinion without hurting the other people. That's my opinion. So what hurts me is that ignorant people ruining it for everybody. You are not happy with a certain group? Yes, the people who are going to board this ship are like-minded people. We are not psychotic individuals living in fear and some type of anxiety that the government is digging a hole under our feet. We are the normal people that see the truth as it was presented to us in history for the last 4,000 years. Nothing has changed. We are living now in the 30s, a carbon copy of the 30s in Europe, what's going on in this world. That's it. More advanced in technology, same actors, same leaders, same agenda, same idiots. <laughs> so, I mean, I wasn't a good student in school. I actually hated history. And you know why I hated history? Because 90% of what you learn in history never, ever happened. It never happened and never existed. I guarantee to you that 90% of the history that you know about never happened. And the people that are being talked about never existed. It was all invented. And the reason I know that, because we have a very solid mesora. Mesora is a dynasty. It's a, it's a system that I give, not to my son, to the, how do you say, processor? The, the one who comes next? How do you say? Processor, predecessor? Predecessor. How? Predecessor. Exactly, the predecessor. I give it to somebody after. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, I gave it to Elazar. Rabbi Akiva, you gave it to Rabbi Meir. Somebody gives it to somebody. Adam gave to, to, gave to Shem, and Shem to, uh, to, to, uh, to Shet, and Shet to Noach. We have a Mesorah, we know the truth. Because there's a fraction of people that add a fourth sin that you don't do, that you will get killed but not to do. You know what I'm talking about? There are three sins that you're not allowed to do, and you're allowed to put yourself to death not to do them. Idolatry, idol worship, uh, uh, idolatry, forbidden relations, and bloodshed. 
Everything else, you're allowed to sin to save your life. These three sins, you even have to put yourself to death not to do these sins. So some individual added a fourth amendment. Never, ever, to, no, you said Lashon Hara, never one ounce of lie comes out of your mouth. If you get to a point that you are a hundred percent truthful, A, I can tell you, you won the lottery. You are, your, your Gan Eden is set for you. You will never fail in your life. More than that, your tshuva, your tikkun, everything you need to do in this world, you'll, you'll finish. Only emit. Put yourself to the challenge. That every word that you say is truth. First of all, that challenge is extremely, extremely difficult. Most people are liars. Try it. Put it to your test. Try one month not to lie. Not to lie to other people, which is almost impossible. Not because you are in situations that you, I had to lie. Then don't lie to yourself. And then don't lie to God. Now let's see you do that for 30 days. You do that, I guarantee to you, you're going to be spiritually in a very, very, very high place. So the fraction of people who are able to reach to that level are the ones who hold the Mesorah because they will never die. Never, never lie. So they are the trustworthy ones that can carry the information from generation to generation because these people will never add a detail. Will never make it sound nicer or more exciting. And I can relate. So we have a Mesora. Look at our history, it doesn't match the history of the world. Our, I'm talking, the, our nation. So forget about this right now. Our situation is not good. 15 years ago, when I started putting videos online, I was very excited, you know, Mashiach is coming, and I'm still excited, by the way. I'm just more with my feet on the ground. I just see the, the acting members. I just put one thing to another. I mean, listen, there were many times in the last decade that we had opportunities, that if you notice, I tried to awaken a large crowd of people to do an action of a series of actions. We, now we have the Elul, uh, the Elul guy, the Chuva Boot Camp, the 40 Days Journey. I mean, we had so many different things that we did. And don't get me wrong, it did good. It did amazing. The group that, were, that was busy, it did a big change. You maybe only saw 20, 30 people here. There were thousands of people online following it. And it's not that I guess I don't see results and I did get disregarded and like, okay, it didn't work. I'm just trying to find a, a more efficient method because it's trying to get everybody into the water and then to cross the water. And a few people are only ready to jump into the water. So when I say Mashiach is not coming anytime soon, listen, it was a title to get your attention. He might come today. It has nothing to do with me. I mean, it does. But it has nothing to do, I mean, with us. He can come today. And I wait for Mashiach exactly as the, it's commanded. I live that every second Mashiach can come. Any explosion, any jet, anything that happens, I'm like, okay, maybe the, I'm sitting on the suitcases. Yeah, 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 actually that's one thing we're going to talk about in the cruise. How to sit on the suitcases. Because a lot of people screaming, Mashiach, 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 okay. First of all, let me go back to what I started saying before. I'm sorry I'm a little bit uh, all over the place today and I'm sidetracking and moving. That's, that's the lecture. I told you already before that we have one big thing completely wrong and that's one of our stumbling blocks. Everybody, which is great, is waiting and cheering for Mashiach, right? Not everybody, but I'm talking now the ones who are, I'm putting them in the in the group of everybody. 
which is great. It's, we are commanded to do that. Uh, it's a basic understanding in Judaism. And also the non-Jews should be included in that. Mashiach is for everybody. It's not just for the Jews. Mashiach is the king of the entire world. He will, king, he will uh, uh, rule all the nations. Bet HaMikdash is going to be for all the nations. But one thing most people got wrong, and my feeling, and this is not a conspiracy, it's my feeling, okay? Yeah, okay, I add it onto the conspiracy list. My feeling is... <laughs> my feeling is that this is one of the, the problems that is causing the delay in the Geula, is what I'm about to tell you now. So if somebody wants to add that to some conspiracy, put it on the conspiracy list in the group of We Don't Like Alona Nava, and there are groups like that. Uh, you know how they put on Facebook, friends of Rabbi so-and-so? So I have the other side. I mean, I also have friends of, but that's how pathetic it is. But uh, I was about to say something, but I'll hold it to myself. Uh, what was they saying? Oh, so we got something very, very distorted. My feeling is, that's the conspiracy. Drum roll. My feeling is that the, the, one of the many reasons for not having the, the, the redemption is the fact that we worked around Mashiach, and not around the coming of God. That is the problem. Now, I addressed that three years ago in, one, in my second Corona lecture, if you remember, I dedicated an hour and a half to that. And I said, Enod Milvado, Enod Milvado. Three people changed, nothing changed. Okay, okay sorry, four people changed. And that's my exaggeration. I'm sure it affected a few thousand people. But everybody's wrapped around the coming of Mashiach. I, for, that's me, I'm excited to see who's Mashiach. And it's not anyone that you think it is, okay? Let me just put it straight out there. Anyone that you think of, it's not him. From, all, from the, the, the ray from north to south. Not Jesus and not Lubavitch Rebbe. Not anything. I guarantee to you. Not a conspiracy. Write it down. You don't know who Mashiach is and nobody knows who Mashiach is. And he doesn't know he's Mashiach. And stop saying that. End of story. And maybe the person who's going to be Mashiach maybe knows a little bit that he might be a candidate. A candidate to be Mashiach. Nobody knows, even Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. Don't underestimate Moshe Rabbeinu and don't put Moshe Rabbeinu lower than Mashiach. Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu didn't know his Moshe Rabbeinu till he saw God. And even then he still didn't believe and it took a whole year for him to understand that I am Moshe Rabbeinu. So to say on a person is Mashiach, Aikvar. Now there's another clown on the internet. There's just uh, posters everywhere saying that he's Mashiach. I'm not going to give too much information, but it's Sarah Netanyahu's brother. Okay? Do you know who I'm talking about? Okay. And I'm already preparing the ground. I'm putting my head down. I also make mistakes. So maybe I'm wrong. But some things I don't make mistakes. Some things are very clear. So why am I saying you all that? A big issue that we have, everybody's waiting for Mashiach, which is great. But what about, where's God? Mashiach is going to be a servant of God. You know that Mashiach is going to prepare the world for redemption, and then he moves aside, and the king of kings will rule. So 
So get your, <laughs> get everything right. Start changing. I'm actually thinking of starting to change the, the, the lingo. I'm waiting for the godly revelation, not for the messianic revelation. I want, I want to see God. I want to see godly revelation in Beit HaMikdash. I give all my respect to the king, to the physical king. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going against Mashiach. I'm not, but we have to put it in the right perspective. I'm going to leave it here. But you have a quick question? It's on the topic or your comment? If you don't mind, say loud. Then also the viewers can maybe hear. Three times a day, we say the Amidah. And when we talk about our redemption, that is in the present tense. And when we say Lachadodi on Shabbat, Correct. We are saying, Moriori, yeah. your redemption yeah. is upon you. Yeah. In other words, we're already in the redemption. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And uh, for some reason or other, I mean, like you're equating Mashiach with redemption. I don't know about Mashiach, but I know about redemption. Yeah. And yeah. We're talking about it every day in the present tense. Yes. Times a day. Exactly. And yet it doesn't sink in. That no. We are in the redemption. I will elaborate on what you're saying. There, uh, uh, there is a, a quote by the Lubavitch Rebbe that, uh, how does it go? Uh, give me a second, I got sidetracked. But the quote goes, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember the, the, the words, but the quote is around, along the line as open your eyes. If you open your eyes, you'll see the redemption. Okay? That's more or less what he said. I, 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 forgive me that I don't remember the words. So for many years I was like, eh, it sounds like a cliche or some, 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 I don't know, some bumper sticker to get everybody excited. But then it happened. Then my eyes opened and I saw the redemption, so I saw what he means. People are living in the redemption right now. And again, it all draws back to why I started with the class with the crews. Why is it saying awaken? I told you last class that 95% of the awake people are sleeping. You have to understand that if you do certain acts, you will see that you are living in redemption. We might not have Beta Migdash yet, and we don't have a physical king, and we don't see the Shekhinah. But the statue is a, a statue of redemption. And this is perfectly working with a, a, a chapter Tzadik, with a, a chapter 19 Tehilim, where David the says, A thousand will fall from one side, ten thousand will fall from your right side, nothing will come to you. You are walking, a person who is living in the redemption walks through this world like Neo looks through the window and he says, oh, I used to eat in that restaurant. Oh, I used to know these people. How many Neos are out there? Neo is not Mashiach. How many Neos are out there? They're, they're looking through the window and they say, that's it, my eyes are already open, really open. Now, when your eyes are really open, <laughs> you don't need to worry about gossiping. You'll never slander. It doesn't even... It's not even in the part of the system. You know that people who are close to me, they just know there's nothing to talk with me about. Up until today, my wife will come and say, I have to tell you this and this, and the, action, the reaction is the same. Am I going to help in the situation? Am I going to contribute to the situation? Is it has to do anything with me? No, not interested. Waste of 17 seconds. When your eyes are truly open, you don't want to gossip. You don't slander. You look at another person that you hate, you don't hate them. You understand where they're coming from and you understand why you dislike them and you find the right ways how to bounce around that person or to get rid of that person in your life. You live a normal life. No confusion. Set goals. A way how to get there, plans, clarity. And especially when it comes to the Gula, I know what I need to do. 
So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, and I'm going to be very extreme, it's kind of like a bunch of psychiatrists and psychologists and teachers and educators looking at some four-year-old child with learning disabilities and motorical problems and they're looking at him and they're not laughing at him at all. It's not even a place that if you put that child in a kindergarten, everybody would laugh at that child. Put that in front of the professionals. They recognize the problem. They ignore the symptoms. They ignore the behavior. They're looking for the problem and they treat the problem without judging the child, without having superiority or looking down at the child. And they're just doing the job. That's it. That's all it takes. So, so some normal people, they look at the rest of the people and that's how they look at them. They have certain, we'll call it now, disabilities. They don't know how to function well in the world. Let me just try to see what I can do. People ask me, don't get offended from poor people write about you. It's almost like me walking in the street and, and, and a three-year-old will look at me and tell me, you're ugly, and I'll get offended. That's more or less the, the, the level. Get offended? From what? Because somebody called me a liar or crazy. Or... So they called me. That's my... so, so, so they did. Wow. So. Uh, no. If you're putting all your focus on Mashiach and not Mashiach. Uh, it's a big problem. I wouldn't say that's the main thing. I wouldn't say, but it's a big thing. I wouldn't say that's the main thing. I don't, I don't know. Listen, I'm more interested that Mashiach will come than you. Okay? If you want to make a competition, I probably will win. I will win Mashiach more than you. Okay? The problem that I have to start working on myself even that we, we use the word Mashiach as a statement. So when I said now, I want Mashiach more than you, it's not only the man, it's everything that comes with it. I just need to change the lingo. So I will start saying I want the redemption. But it's also not 100% correct. I want Lachzor le Mikedem, to Ganeden Mikedem. So, the point is that, listen, there are a lot of problems uh, that are causing the delay in the redemption. Right now, I already gave a class a year and a half ago. I gave my opinion with my own explanations that I think that we are going to go through a seven-year cycle now and the redemption will come in 2029, 2030. And that's what I said a year and a half ago. I gave a very long lecture. I took all... The, the, the seven years, the description, the three places in the Talmud that describe how the seven years are going to look prior to the coming of Mashiach. I explained that thoroughly. Then I pulled out Agenda 2030, compared them both, and told you this is what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. My opinion. No doubt Mashiach can come at any given moment, but how I see things is that now, I mean, now we're past a year. But last year, we started a sabbatical, a sabbatical cycle. Right? Ending in 2029, falls perfectly with their agenda. They're doing their agenda exactly how they planned. Nothing changed. Conspiracy, not conspiracy, think whatever you want. At this point, I really don't care. You want to stab some, some, you want to stab yourself with some junk, do whatever you want at this point. But everything that is planned is going according to schedule perfectly. You are not noticing it because you are thinking you are awake, but you are still under the spell and you think things are fine. The reality is that my observation is that we're going to go through a cycle of seven years and then the turmoil and the balagan will come later and then what are you doing in the meantime? We always keep the option that Mashiach can come at any moment, but we need to do two things. We need to first focus on the problem. If we don't focus on the problem, we can't change anything. And the second thing that we need to do is to add and apply different actions that would center us where we need to be. So this is the summary of what you're going to hear on the cruise. 
<laughs> and much more, of course. I'm not going to talk about the underground societies that live under the planet, under the surface. Then I'll leave to another series. I am not going to touch the fact that we are living on a flat plate and not on a flying ball in some space. I'm not going to touch all the rest of the true things that are happening behind the scenes. I probably will, because that's how I talk. Somebody thought, I'm not joking, send us an urgent message. I mean, I got very, I got messages that the, the, the cruise is a conspiracy to bring me on the cruise and to sink the cruise like the Titanic and Rabbi Anava will go down forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> the CIA are gonna send seagulls that will hover over the ship and poke holes in Uh, I am going to talk about certain things. I mean, why am I saying so somebody sent me a message <coughs> asking if, uh, what was he saying? Uh, <coughs> which, <coughs> sorry, which new conspiracy I'm going to, I'm going to talk about. And, <laughs> and I said, that, listen, and I said, why, why, why do you think I'm going to start uh, coming with new conspiracies? So he says, no, because you said in the first video that it's going to be international waters and you can finally talk freely uh, because there's no camera. And I said, you are either a moron or either an idiot. <laughs> you choose. Which one do you want? I said that finally I can talk without my videos being removed. So I can talk. Now every word that I'm saying, is the video going to be removed? So now I'm thinking which video to put on YouTube, maybe we'll remove. So I sent in the first video. Finally, I can talk without my videos being removed. So people talk from that that I'm going to come now with a James Bond uh, a briefcase and open it. Tell you about, I have a bunch of secrets. Either the secret files from the CIA, the secret files from the Mossad. <laughs> so. Uh, if you want to talk to me about conspiracies, I am the, uh, the address. I am very well connected in very many places. I know a lot of things. I just don't say a lot of things. Uh, but I know a lot of things because, because whoever wants to listen and get educated, go ahead, take the information. You, wanna, you don't want to, I don't care, mock me, slander me, say whatever I want, I can care less. Say it loud so I can get all your mitzvot. I, I, I actually wanted to contact, uh, yesterday night I got a bunch of screenshots from all the talk, talk how do you call the chat rooms, cha chatter, chatter. chatter, chat rooms, whatever, chatter. groups, so I, I got a summary of all the screenshots. One guy actually wanted to call and tell him, thank you, I want to wish you Shana Tova, I want to wish you Gmar Chatima Tova, I want to wish you everything. Thank you for the present you gave me yesterday. I'm looking here. Wow, you have a lot of mitzvot. Ooh, thank you so much, my dear friend. Uh, that's a big thing that halts the geula. When God as a father sees us putting each other down, and each other, I'm not talking about you and me in the same room or Jew to Jew. It's non-Jew to non-Jew, Jew to non-Jew, non-Jew to Jew. It has nothing to do with faith. Okay? People come up to me with these ridiculous questions. Can I steal from a Gentile? I'm not joking. I get questions. I get questions. And then when I say no, but Rabbi so-and-so said that I'm okay. Isn't it, doesn't say in the Gemara that if I steal from a Gentile who's an idolater and a... I don't know, the last time I read in the Torah, it says, Lot ignov, clear. Yeah. Don't steal. No, it's so, <clears throat> uh, what was I saying? It's a big problem in the redemption that, that the slandering and the gossip and the Lashon Ara and the groups and the segregation and the... But that's part of what they're trying to do. And they're doing it well. 
And when I'm saying they, I'm talking about the psychopaths that are controlling us. And by the way, that's what I started saying before, I sidetracked. When I said that you, some people are going to write that as a new conspiracy. When our vocabulary and our point of view is only about Mashiach and not about Hashem, I do believe that that distorted way of thinking was planted in our societies by the same people. That we should chant Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach and not God, God, God. And don't think it doesn't exist. The Erev Rav is most dominating in the religious world. Not in politics, not in the parliaments. They are there. But the, the beat of the Her Erev Rav is in the religious world. Through the rabbis, Batei Dinim, Yeshivot, political parties, that's where the Erev Rav is the most strongest. And I do believe that they already engineered it into our subconscious that we're waiting for Mashiach and not to God. So we will fail with idolatry by worshipping a man and not the messenger. So that's a problem in itself. The gossiping, the slandering, the lying, another problem. What I want to address on the trip, on the cruise, and I don't know how many hours I can, I mean, when I open my mouth, nothing can stop it. Uh, so I don't know, I actually, I know what I'm going to talk about in the cruise, but I don't know yet how I'm going to organize it in the right way. But I am going to give a clear overview of what's going on in the world right now through my eyes, not through anything else. And my eyes use these books. I don't invent anything. I read, learn, teach. That's it. So I will talk about what I see. And when I say what I see is I look at the corresponding time to actions based on the time of that it happened corresponding to the Torah. So there are ways of looking and seeing and, uh, and some, I, I want to address that. And then I will address simple things that everyone needs to do that their eyes will really be open so they will be normal people. You don't have to be a superman. You have to be a normal person. When your eyes are really open then, and you call yourself awake, it's not because you know which government controls which government is that when you see a person in front of you against you you don't even see him as an enemy you just see you see him as he is i don't get upset you know with all these demonstrations in israel people get so upset why get upset they think different i don't agree with them they think different it is all engineered it is all fake it's i see the show you know it's a show it's not real the whole thing it's part of the agenda it's not bibi bibi is not an issue i mean bibi is an issue but he's not the issue they're saying that they want to get bibi i'm talking about right now what's going on in israel for the last eight months it's one big hoax it's nonsense it's to get the people confused it's to get the people warped up against others and this is a lot of Master, pla master planning behind it. It's not what you think it is. Besides the fact that, I don't know if you remember, but at the time when they were forcing the vaccines in Israel, they were passing laws that you don't even know about, that the, gov that the Supreme Court can overrule a law that the Knesset, that the parliament did. Are you aware of that? Yeah. You are aware of that, yeah. but not five million Israelis that while we were uh, 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 bullied in the corona, they passed laws. And now the Supreme Court in Israel is stronger than the Knesset. Does that make sense to you? And did you notice that all the judges are left wings? Yeah. Not white, one white right wing judge. Or? or? There, are, there is an Arab judge. Oh, okay. And, uh, of course, Ashkenazi, all of them. There's one Sephardi. I mean, you see the... I mean... So, it's part of the way of bringing power, taking the power from the government and giving it in front of our eyes to another party. 
because that's what they're doing. Now the Supreme Court controls everything. I, I, I didn't choose that, those people. I may be voted for a prime minister. Did you vote for a judge? No. So in a democracy, I vote for a leader. If they're saying democracy, we won democracy, right? Bibi got the votes. Say, I'm not saying we. I'm taking myself out. Bibi won. The Likud won. So that's democracy. The numbers, sh the numbers showed. But the fact is that they're trying in any type of a way, when they were forcing the vaccines, I don't know if you remember, they were trying to pass laws that police can come into your house without a warrant and, and many other things. They were trying to pass laws. They did a lot, a lot of damage. That everything that they want to do is, uh, uh, is, law, is according to the law. But it's not according to the law. So they, they, they rigged the system that they make new laws. Any normal country, the citizens would be on the streets burning the country. So, uh, the Constitution. The Constitution is the Torah. Be, exactly. Exactly. You said it, you said it right. I'm going to repeat to the viewers, the, 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 how did you say? They don't accept the Constitution because the Constitution is the Torah. Exactly. So, not to sidetrack even more because we want to go to the next class and I wanted this class to be five minutes and it ended up being, I guess, an hour. But now you know what to expect on November 5 to November 9. I am going to talk about many. I have a lot what to say. I, I, I weigh my words smart. And why? Because, not because I don't want to say, because if nothing will be applied, no point of saying. If I say something and it's not going to be applied, I don't need, so you don't need to know about it. And, uh, you know, there's too many uh, dangers involved in so many things, so I, 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 I decide, decide to say what I want to say, when I want to say, and how I want to say it. But the cruise, it's not going to be conspiracies. Most likely you will hear there, here and there, because that's how I talk. But it's going to be about practical things. It's going to be about a roadmap for the next few years, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, Prepare yourself to the redemption. Prepare yourself to the outcoming events that might happen. Yeah, a lot of physical preparation. Noah also prepared for the flood, by the way. Yaakov Avinu also prepared for the battle with Esav. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be any different. Mm -hmm. Yaakov Avinu prepared for the extreme side. War and peace. But he prepared. So, Bezad Hashem, I am uh, uh, I'm confident that the trip, the tour is going to be amazing. There are other speakers. I don't know exactly the topics of the other speakers. But there's going to be, uh, uh, it's all like-minded people. So, if I, some places that I go, and I know they're not going to accept what I have to say. I was in a lecture not too long ago. And I, quickly I figured out that, that they're not on my frequency. Some were sitting in the crowd with masks three years after Corona. I mean, I mean, I think the Corona evaporated by now. But, but, uh, but, uh, whatever. I saw the crowd is not on my frequency. And if I'll start saying certain things, they're not going to appreciate it. So I throw it in their face. I came to teach Torah, not, not to annoy them. So for one hour, I didn't speak about certain, certain things that I feel very uh, close to or passionate or clear about. Because if I will start talking to them about all sorts of things, they'll be like, okay, we, 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 so we don't want to hear. Yeah. So I'd rather be smart yeah. than right. Yeah. So I went, he taught the Torah, didn't speak about anything. When I was challenged about the vaccines, masks, and all the rest, I said my opinion, and that's it. So... You have to be smart, not to be right. And most people are not in your level. Most people don't understand what you understand. And even if they do, and even a lot of people think they understand, there's a lot what to, to, to learn in order to mature to a point that we can actually be an acting role in the redemption. And that's why I told you in the beginning of the class, 
I don't do things to people because I like them. I am not friendly. I am not, it's not, I'm not saying it in a negative or a positive way. That's how I am. That's how God created me. I'm not that type of person. But it's not that I don't like other people. And some people, I dislike their behavior, their opinions, their, their, uh, their everything they stand for, but I don't, don't like them. I just deal with it. They're part of the system. There are a bolt, a screw in the system. So I'm not going to like something that I need. So I'll just move a seat, and that's it. That's how it is. You sit in a, you go to a synagogue, you go to pray, you sit in a seat, you don't like this guy, you don't like this guy. What do you do? Do you start a fight? Go to a different seat. So sit over there. You think every shul that I go into, I look at all the people and I love them all. You know, there is a halacha that the, 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 the chazan, the baal tefillah, the one who leads the prayer, has to have avat Israel to all the people in the room, and if not, he can't be the chazan. He has to have a true, deep love for avat Israel, not even knowing who's in the crowd. If not, don't go up to the podium. I've been to some shuls that are so strict, who goes to lead the prayer? If your wife is not covering her hair, you're never going to go up to the podium. If your kids are this or that, you never go up to the podium. No, I respect that, by the way. Okay. I, 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 I don't look down. I respect that. I'm not like that. I will give the chance and the opportunity to people to, to get to these places. But I definitely respect that if I want to be the elite of the elite, and I'm so particular about anything, then yes, I want to be a closed group that everybody's in the same level. I don't want A, B, and C. I totally respect that. But <clears throat> I've been into shows that they won't let a person become the bald feel life. He has a smartphone. Or many other things, which again, I respect. I respect, accept. I would not dare to say anything, but I wouldn't even say anything against. That's your way of life. That's the thing that makes you... I respect that. But when you're thinking of it, really, how can I be the leader of the prayer where I have to have everybody included in my prayer and I dislike somebody in the crowd? So how does that work? So I'm not now coming to polish every button in our action. But the fact is that I said yesterday, yesterday I recorded a quick uh, video. It was very important to me that it will be done on Chai Lul in a vineyard. And I'm not going to tell you why. It's not that much of a, a secret. It's not where I keep my secret bunker, by the way. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you comments and questions that I get. Because when I panned with the camera, you see Lebanon. So somebody asked me, that's where your bunker is? <laughs> yes, it's 150 meters from the green rock. And when you see the rusted key, yeah, I'm going to tell you where my bunker is. So... Uh, so uh, I, I will tell you, it's not such a big deal. I, I'll tell you when the time is right, why the vineyard. But, but I was saying yesterday in the class, something very, very simple is that <clears throat> you have to really, you have to really look around you and, and really see what's going on. It's not... Uh, it's not what you think. And uh, we have a lot, of a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. We can't hate each other. And if you dislike somebody, just put it aside. It's, you, you know, when chas v'shalom, there's an emergency. The ship is sinking. You stop hating each other. You have to help each other. And, I mean, it, it comes naturally. So what changed? The, 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 what, what made the, the, the person connect to another person? The, 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 the sharing the same danger? No, is that we have to understand, that's what most people understand, we have to help each other. 
And I disagree with most people, by the way. I, I told you that. I disagree with most people, their knowledge, their opinions, how they behave. But I will never come and rape myself on somebody else. My opinion. My... No. I, I say loudly what I think, but I'm not going to throw it on you. So, I said one word too much. Let's finish. We have another class. The trip is November 5 to November 9. I don't know the situation with recording. It might be in the, with no uh, way of broadcasting it, maybe recording. I don't know. I don't know. I'll try my best. <clears throat> it's a very short trip, so it's going to be summarized. It's not going to be so much information, but I definitely want to address. I didn't uh, uh, talk uh, about these things for a very long time. We're going to address my uh, point of view of what's going on. That is just educational, that you can see what's going on. Because a lot of people see the media, they interpret what they see, however they interpret it, and some things need to be addressed that you interpret it the right way. Okay? Whether it's uh, fires in, uh, in Canada, a fake war in Ukraine, Spain is underwater, whatever it is. Some people take from it the wrong message. Okay? Or they take from it what's going... You have to see that the world is going to go much crazier. I told you that a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. This is nothing. This is just a preparation. The little chaos that we saw with Corona was a drop in an ocean. You know, that's another thing we're going to address in the, in, the, in the cruise. How do you keep your mind sane when you're seeing what's happening and it's going to get worse, by the way. It's going to get a hundred times worse. If you see now left-wing activists going into Bnei Brak, and, and, and demonstrating there, this is nothing. Because they want a civil war. They want us to fight with each other. They're preparing that. They want the secular to fight with the religious. They want the Arabs to fight with the Jews. They want the Jews to fight with the Arabs. They want that. So you see all these extreme groups going now on buses and, and humiliating religious people and going to Bnei Brak and What is it your business? Do I go to Tel Aviv and demonstrate that you're half naked? No. It's your business. Yeah. Don't come to my city and demonstrate that my wife is covering her hair and I'm uh, controlling her. That's what they're doing. They're demonstrating for the poor women in Bnei Brak that are being uh, 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 forced into this world. So... A lot of people see what's going on and they're interpreting in it this completely the wrong way. They are awake, yeah? They're, they're in the awake group. But they're not awake about nothing. So I will address things as they are. And I guess it's not that you, you can take what I say, you cannot take what I say. It's free. Right? I don't take money from you to, to, to listen to me. So you don't have to take it. Do whatever you want. But we will address the, to seeing the reality through the right binoculars and the right uh, lenses. Practical tools. I do want to talk about a lot of practical tools that has nothing to do necessarily with Torah. But I look at my forefathers, whether it's Abraham, or Noah, David Melech, they all prepared strategically for everything. We're not different. I need to prepare myself a bunker. I might not never use it. But I need to prepare something. And I need to prepare for any event. Whether the money is gone, the internet is down, the banks are collapsed. I mean, are you prepared? Tomorrow they get banks collapse. You prepared? You don't need a bank account. That, that's a plus that you don't have a bank account. But the banks collapse. How do you buy food? No, how do you... <laughs> that, I, that's a good one. Uh, but... but, uh, but yeah. I know. But the reality is, I will tell you how it affects you, because it affects... I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you that in personal, if I need to. Yeah. Uh, banks collapse tomorrow. How do you buy food? How do you move your car? There's no gas. Are you prepared for that? No. Okay, come to the cruise. And you're not prepared for that, guarantee. There are three people in the world that are maybe prepared, and the banks are crashing, by the way. It's not if, it's when, and in what intensity. So prepare yourself. 
Okay, so the ones who are lucky and say, I don't have any money, good, one check, one check on the, on the, on the list. But there are other things. Yeah, Hashem will help. Hashem will help the ones who are with Him. Okay? Hashem will help. People will walk through this in a tunnel of glory and you're not going to feel anything. The ones who are close to Hashem. We say that almost every day. The ones of you who are holding on to Hashem will live today. That's the direct translation. Hayom, it refers to the day of the redemption. And the ones who are holding on to Hashem, nothing's going to happen to them. You need to f figure out if you're really holding to Hashem. But if you're holding on to Hashem strong, nothing, nothing will happen to you. Nothing. A few, uh, a few days ago, I got bitten by a wasp. Now, which was all very interesting, Ashgachapadit, that I'm not going to share with you, but it was an unbelievable Ashgachapadit, how I saw everything. But I got bitten by a wasp. That's how you say, wasp? 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 So, uh, when a bee, a wasp, they, they sting you, uh, some people, they, they shoo the bee off. It's not good. You can break the, 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 the stinger and more venom comes out. So, so I had this wasp on my hand and it's, it's painful. It, it felt like a thick needle going through my bone was my thing. It's very, very painful. Very painful. But why am I telling you that? Because I didn't want to shoo it off, so I went like this. It didn't go off. And when I looked at it, and I'm telling you, it was pa painful. It was like viciously holding on to me. Like it was like with all its power <laughs> holding on to me and... Uh, and I was like, wow, you're evil. But it didn't let go. And I was like, really trying to get it. Eventually, it left. <laughs> but why am I saying that? I was like, even from a wasp, you can learn. If you hold on to Hashem like that, <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. Just hold on to Hashem like that wasp was on my finger. No, no turbulence, no storm will move you. You'll be steady, strong, holding on to Hashem, looking at the world, saying, why didn't they listen? Yesterday was Chayelul. I'm just going to remind you, we have 12-day countdown to the month of Tifsrei. Every day now corresponds to one month. Today is the month of Cheshvan. Yesterday, okay, I'll give you a discount because the month of, it, uh, 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 of uh, Tishrei, there's a lot of holidays, we don't sin much. There's a lot of holidays and we're in a very high place. Cheshvan, we need to start doing tshuva. So today corresponds to Cheshvan. Tomorrow to Kislev, every day do tshuva for one month. I'm not going to repeat myself, all the information is on the website. What to do, how to do, what to read, when to do, how, what, 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 what. And... Time is, is running out. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. This Rosh Hashanah is not going to be... It's not going to be... It's, it's, in essence, everything is good. Hashem knows what He's doing. Even if you are not prepared and you don't do nothing, just love Hashem. Just, just, just respect other people. Do your Torah. Learn Torah. Just mind your own business. We're heading towards exciting times and interesting times. It's not the time to fight on the little things. It's not the time to group. I don't like your group because you said that on my guru. And, and listen, I don't agree with many people. I don't dislike them. I don't slander them. I don't gossip about them. I don't put them down. I will maybe say my strong opinion against what they do or say, but that's just to bring awareness. But for example, that individual that yesterday lost his olam haba by slandering me all over the internet everything that he said is right but it was already said it's already known 
Why do you have to say that? You, 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 I'm tell, tell, tell. If I would talk to that person as a rabbi, I would tell him, you, 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 you shot yourself in the leg. That's what I don't understand. I do not understand. Maybe Hashem gifted me with some type of sensitivity. I do not understand that. I can relate with it. I cannot relate. I don't understand. Going online, right? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It blows my mind. Not to say that neither one of these people will dare to stand in front of my say, face and say something. I really... I, I, that's my... Best challenge. I always challenge anyone who slanders me online. Come and say it to my face. Let's see you talking to my face and telling me what you're brave to say behind the keyboard. I want to see you saying that to my face. My tongue is so sharp, I can humiliate and degrade any person with three words. My tongue is sharp. And I'm not showing off or anything. Oh, I have a sharp tongue. Deadly. But when you have a deadly weapon, you know how to also not use it. But the luck of many people is that I don't open my mouth. But I don't, I don't understand that. I actually don't understand. It's very hard for me to relate. God has taken me in the last 50 years through a lot of places in this world. I've been to the worst places in this world. Drugs abuse, heavy drug abuse, criminal lifestyle. I mean, I've been jailed six times. I've been everywhere and everywhere and did everything on the list. Nothing on the list I did not do. I didn't rape anybody in my life. I have a few sins that I never did. But I did horrible things in my life. Horrible, horrible things. But I understand what I had to go through all this because now any person that will come to me with a problem, I relate. I don't judge them. I've been there. I relate with everything. I've been to horrible places. And that's a good leader. A good leader relates uh, with, with, the, with the, the, the people, the, the followers. Not that I'm comparing myself to anybody, but Moshe Rabbeinu was a leader. He, he, Moshe Rabbeinu, you know that Moshe Rabbeinu had to relate with everything that says in the Torah, and he had to do it. So Moshe was a murderer. And Moshe committed adultery. Moshe committed everything. He needed to relate with it in order to write it. So if someone will ever come and address a certain sin, he sees eye to eye. I did it too. I know how to get out of it. So a good leader has to have real life experience. So I can relate with almost anything. You'll come to me. People come to me with their darkest secrets. And I relate. Relate, I mean, either I did it myself so I know how it feels, how strong the temptation, how hard it is to get to shake it off, or I just relate that I don't judge you and think bad about you and just say, okay, let's brainstorm for a solution. Something is very hard for me to relate. The Lashon Ara thing, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand. I understand where it's coming from. I understand the frustration, the jealousy, whatever. But I can't, I, 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 I don't have it in myself. Baruch Hashem. But it's a bad thing. You lose all your, everything. You lose everything. You must lose everything. Your dignity, your honor, your respect. I will have zero self-respect if I would slander another person. In public? I don't know. Some things don't, don't sit well. So, we have a long way to go. And the ones who are a little bit focused on what's going on has, have a big responsibility. To do it in a smart way. You have a responsibility. How awake you are, I don't know. But at least you have the goodwill. But then you have responsibility. Because, uh, you know, we are, might be the ones that the redemption is depending on. 
And I know the ones who are against us will now say, how dare you say that the, the redemption is, is dependent on you, not on us great Torah scholars that learn depth, into the depth of the Torah to learn when it's okay to say Lashon Ara. So, <laughs> so, Rosh Hashanah is very soon. Get yourself ready for Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, we get blessed with everything. Our life, mi chye, mi yamut, our, our sustenance, our parnasa, our money, our, our basic things. If you're going to be happy this year, unhappy, dissatisfied. So take it in the right measurement. And Bezal uh, Hashem will be more classes. We'll talk about more things. And uh, I hope I uh, can even see you on the cruise. And if not on the cruise, maybe in the life-saving boats after they sink the cruise and we're on the life-saving boats, so we'll be, you know, <laughs> learning on the life-saving boats. And then a shark of the KGB <laughs> will come and listen to us. <laughs> listen, we have to laugh yeah, at ourselves sometimes. But don't laugh at others even if you don't like them. It's not good for you. It's not in your, it's not befitting you to laugh at somebody else because whatever. It's, sometimes it's sad. Sometimes I look at people who are m adults, sometimes older than me, and I look at them and I say, wow, they behave worse than my kids and I'm struggling to educate my kids. Now I have to struggle to educate my students. So I have kids all over the world. So, you know, people need to grow up. People need to grow up. And, and we're going to talk a lot about a lot of interesting things in the, in the, in the cruise because I'm not going to be afraid. I'm filled. You see how I'm stuttering because I'm, I'm afraid my words will be taken the wrong way and the video will be uh, uh, removed. You don't notice it. I noticed it that I started 15 times this minimum this lecture. I'm thinking, say, not to say, to say, don't say. Okay, so let me talk about something else. It's annoying. Yeah. But, and I want to put it on YouTube because that's where it gets most exposure. Yeah. But you see how people's mind is distorted. I say I can finally talk in front of a camera without worrying that the video will be uh, removed. And people interpreted that I'm going to reveal now the new secrets that the world don't know about and the, our secret group, we're going to talk about all the cuckoo stuff. <laughs> so, so I think uh, I nailed the nail pretty good. I will wish you Shana Tova, Gmachatima Tova, all the best. You want any information about the cruise? Uh, contact the, the, the individuals who are running the cruise. I don't know much about it. People ask me uh, about the meals, vegan. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That has to be done in front of the organizers. There are deals that they're giving, uh, discounts or, or early birds, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be great. And Bezad Hashem, we won't sink and come back to Haifa. <laughs>